Hi, for this layout, I'm using our new Our Moments uh, paper pack and embellishments. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, absolutely stunning. Uh, this is pretty much our designer papers and lots of different patterns and textures and I just love the rich colours of this pack. Uh, and the Tone on Tone is actually uh, probably almost my favourite because it's got a lot more neutral bases that I like to use. So really, really, really pretty papers. The variety mats are lovely with lots of titles and so forth. Um, I always buy the, I never used to, but I always buy the variety mats. Look at that, that's just beautiful. Um, because sometimes if you want to do a, a quick page, uh, these mats, and I'm going to use that today, are fantastic for matting your photos in a hurry. So you don't even have to uh, cut up your photo mats, but just absolutely stunning. So the mats, then the laser cut borders, which are also fantastic. Uh, lots of pretty borders and the laser cut embellishments come in the same pack. So hopefully you can see those. And I can see myself ordering lots of packs of these because I love anything like that. Uh, and the sticker pack itself has corners and leaves. And I should have already had that open for you. Um, you can see all that. I love all these leaves and the hearts and the beautiful words there. Very neutral and beautiful, rich. The, the colourings in it are very rich. This is us. Uh, love. Like a walk down memory lane. So there's lots. You could use these for lots of different themes. Not just love, which I love about it. And once again, the beautiful great length border stickers. I really like these. And I think the navy blue ones are going to be fantastic as well. So let's get on with... Putting our page together now this one is I've designed around uh, I wanted to do create a second page to go with this page that I'd already done because uh, it was a night out for my birthday and this is as you can see done with the hour moments so the basis of this is the main shape we're going to create is this shape here so it's almost like a, a coffin shape really I, um, rhombus I think it's called with the, the flat end so that's that's what we're going to create to put the bases of the page together so let me pop that away I've already chosen some papers out of the packs so this one and this one I believe were out of the tone on tone packs and I'm going to make this my base and this one my background and then I've chosen these prints because they've got great double sides, which is what you want. You want a nice contrast so you can, because you're going to cut your rhombosses out of these. And I wanted to use this one because I used it in this page as my background. So that's the reason why I've used that to, to tie it in. So let's start with the 12 inch trimmer. And let's prepare our base. So I like to window frame a lot of pages like I did in this one. Um, so we're going to do exactly the same thing. So let's start. Move these out the way. Now basically, tool-wise, you'll just need tape runners, foam squares, adhesives, but mainly your 12-inch trimmer for this. That's what your main tool is going to be to, to create this layout. So if we take our paper that is going to sit on top, that the photo is going to sit on top of, I'm just doing half an inch on two sides so we get a nice quarter inch border around it. those to one side because we may even use those later 
Okay, so make sure if you, you have a directional pattern before you adhere it down, make sure you work out which way your directional pattern goes. I think this is this goes both ways. This is the if I was using this side, it's all the same pattern, and I did contemplate using that, but I wanted the um, the yellow side. So go ahead and stick that down. Adhere that. Quite often I put things together in advance for you, but this one I'm going to build from, I think we can build it right from the start. Let's see. That looks fairly even. So there's our base done. Now we, are, we need eight of these shapes that I mentioned earlier, and I hope you can see those. So that's my little template for it. Uh, out of whatever colours. Now, if if you did four different papers and did two of each, you'd be fine. Or if you have even two papers with good contrast, you could just do four out of each and, and flip them. So whatever suits you. So I think um, I'm going to have plenty to choose from with the hour moments because there's lots of... Um, uh, great colours to choose from in there. So 1.7 inches wide is what you need to start cutting. Let's start with that. By 2.75. So there's one. Two, and I'll put that to one side in case I need it, which I may have. This is a, um, a creating these shapes are really good for using up your scraps, which we always have too many of. You know, quite often you open a pack of paper and you cut bits off, and you've got left leftover bits and don't know what to do with them. Uh, creating a layout where you've got a standout shape which is what we're doing and you get to use those those up so there's four I think I only picked out three sheets of paper so I might need to find another one then I can have eight different if I d use another sheet of paper I can have eight uh, different patterns which will be perfect okay, to one side let me find another piece of paper now I was going to use this rhombus uh, patterned paper because it has the rhombus pattern on it I thought that'd be quite cute but when you turn it over to use the other side the cameras run the other way so I would be cutting either cutting the pattern so it was running that way and when you look at the other side they would run as diamonds or the opposite way around so so be mindful of what's on both sides of your paper because pattern choice is everything so I'll leave that one I think what we're going to do is go with this woody grain one and it's got these cute little flowers on the back that are, are not very directional so i think that will make a really good choice uh which way do i want my wood grain running will go that way
Okay, now our eight pieces have been cut. Put the rest of it to one side. Won't need the rest of that. So what we're going to do now, I'll pick one with a light pattern to show you. So we're going to mark out points using a ruler and pencil as a cutting line. Now you probably could only have to do it to two. If you're clever enough, you can stack them up and, um, and cut them all at once. So to move that out the road. I don't know whether you can see my marking here. I'm having trouble finding room on my table. Look at that. Now we need to mark it in half, which is just when you get to the one and quarter, one and a quarter. It's two one sixteenths over the top. So there's my halfway mark. Now where where I'm marking this, I'm obviously going to be using this side of the paper so it won't matter but you need to mark both top and bottom so just past the quarter and mark there and then on the sides we are going to mark half an inch from both sides And that will be our cutting lines. I did try being clever with a 45 degree angle on the trimmer to cut it. And I unfortunately just couldn't work out how to get it accurate. So I went, you know what? The old fashioned way that we all understand might be the easiest. So that will be one. And what we're going to do is, if you can see, from that point to that point... And we're going to do this at our markings all the way around to create the rhombus shape with a flat. I think there's probably a name for that with the flat sides, but I don't really know what it is, to be quite honest. I wish I could tell you that, but I just don't know. All right, you can kind of see I've got that shape happening. So double check that line there because I think that's slightly out. Something doesn't seem right, so let's redo that. So your lines do have to be accurate, otherwise you'll end up with some really odd shapes. Okay, and you'll repeat that with at least another one, because what we're going to do is, if I, I don't know if that is the, the other one, because it's nice and light. If we stack up four of them, making sure that they're all together, as so. Actually, if I do that, then we get both sides. And you need to hold them tight together. And we're going to either use our personal trimmer, which you could do or our 12 inch trimmer to cut them and you need to line up your line now you can use your little guide here I don't know whether you can see that your guide to make sure that it's accurately lined up where you want it to cut but it needs to be fairly accurate so and it will cut through all four layers quite easily. 
then turn and do your next line. And this is the hardest part of this layout, is cutting these. So it's, it's fairly simple, really. Now that's out slightly, so I'm going to go back and go over that because I want them to be accurate. I'm at the point where my mat needs changing on my trimmer. So I think I will do that shortly. Ah, oh, that's better. And the last one. Right, now that's my four little rhomboss shapes done. Here's four of them. And I'll go ahead and do the other four and come back to you. Okay, we're back with all of our measurements done on the second lot and a brand new trimmer mat. So that'll make my life a whole lot easier to see where to cut because you can see the line on it. Much better. Amazing what a difference a new mat does. Because like I said earlier, it, this trimmer is more than capable of cutting through four layers. You just have to make sure they don't move. So you don't have to cut them all individually. And one of these, when we lay them out, we're going to cut them in half because that's going to create the ends of our layout. You'll see when we place them down. Right, that is, and that might be the end part, we'll see. So. Now, with your eight pieces, I'll turn, you want them all different. So what we're going to do is either top or bottom. I might go the top. Oh, no, we might go the bottom because I might do something different on the top, I think. And we want to arrange them. however you like them. You can see that. That one's ended up missing a bit of a peak. I have to fix that and I can see with the other mat how that's happened. So we'll fix that up. Like I say, if your mat is due for a change, it's, it's going to affect your measurements. So there we go, that's better. You can see like that. That might be a little bit the same. I 
think that's going to be my end one. Now they're two the same. So what else have I got the same in this row of those? Okay. Might flip those over. So you can see how it creates this gorgeous border. So, and then this one, this last one, we will cut in half to go at the two ends. So you end up with seven that are whole and two that are in half. So I'll go ahead and do that. If you wanted to cut a separate pattern for each end, you may do that. And I may even think about doing that yet. So let me stick these down and I'll come back to you. Okay, now I've stuck my rhombosses down, down the bottom. And I'm going to create just a small border across the top using a laser cut. And also some leftover strips from this layout you can see that's come off the side and this one's come off the previous one that I did the one I showed you before so I'm going to place them turn them upside down create a bit of contrast up the top and then we're just going to place it I don't know which way to go maybe that way on top just to create some a bit of layering I'm most tempted to actually go like that, I think. So, you you know, you can always use up your leftover pieces. I think that looks great. Simple but effective. So we're going to adhere that to the top. Or close to the top. And then I've still got room for my photos. So let me grab a bit of card so I don't add sticky to my table I don't know whether anybody else does this it's usually the best way for me to not get repositionable tape everywhere so let's start with this piece now I could have used the shorter pieces but I didn't want to cut anything off the laser cut so I've opted to keep it the full length and have it go over the border as you can see the other side of that paper is very pretty too but it's too close to the background and I think sometimes when you choose a background just be careful that it's not too busy and doesn't take away from from your photos sometimes you can get them to I, that's that's why I always try to choose neutral backgrounds as much as possible and have a nice contrast. And because of the burgundy in my photos and here, I think I'll use the burgundy side. Now, which way to have? I think we'll have it going out that way because it's going to be the right-hand side of my page. All right, there's the border at the top. Now, remember how I spoke about earlier? I picked out some bits and pieces here, but put them to one side. About... Um, you matting your photos so these are the two photos i wish to use and i've already chosen out some mats i'll go the lovely floral one you see how quick and easy that is i don't have to cut anything i don't have to do anything stick that down and it's done uh, as I said earlier, I never used to buy the mats and uh, I discovered that that's such a quick way of getting a page done is to just give it and use the mats. I think I'll use my normal tape runner. So I don't want my photos moving. Once they're down, they're down. And this was my birthday this year, so... Tape runner. 
don't know whether anyone's ever like me. You have both your tape runners, and I've got different colours, as you can see. Both your tape runners sitting on your table, and you pick up the wrong one for the wrong use. I do it all the time. And it's very painful when you want to use a reposition ball, and you pick up a standard one and start using it, and then have to peel it all off. Let's see. And if I can... They did me this, because I'm gluten-free and dairy-free, they did me this fantastic dessert. So I wanted to try to fit that in as a 4x4 four four if I could. It's going to be a bit more than it. Slightly larger. We don't need the spoon. So I don't know whether we're going to fit that in without cutting off... Uh, Cutting out too much of the layout. And I don't want to cover up this bottom, so I might think about that afterwards. Because this is the main thing. So then we're just going to go ahead and I also thought that with these we could add some of the embellishments to... Uh, the tops of our rhombuses so it's just a matter of working out where possibly like that uh, I may hand fussy cut out this I think and possibly use hand cut out this little tag as well to use so let me get that all down and I will come back to you so I've gone ahead and stuck everything down and added the rest of my embellishments. I just used one out of the embellishment pack and a few stickers. Um, it didn't really need very much at all. And I fussy cut around the heart out of the variety pack. So it, you know, quite simple and easily came together. But when you lie them side by side, I was pretty happy to look at the end product they actually work very well together so uh have fun making your romboss page layout thank you